What's poppin' everyone? Welcome back to What's the Matter? As we've learned in previous videos, matter is all around us. Anything in the world that takes up space and has a mass is considered matter. So this means we have a whole lot of matter out there. So as chemists, we want to understand how to classify and sort out the different types of matter that we have. So to help us understand how to do so, we're going to pull out the matter sorting hat. So that's right, put yourself in a good positive vibe, pull out your pen and pad, and let's do this. Our matter sorting hat breaks up matter into three main sorting classifications or classes. And all matter is classified or sorted based on the state of matter that it exists in, how pure the substance is, and what type of changes that matter will undergo. All substances will contain features from each of these classes and will be sorted based on the characteristics of that matter. As we take a look deeper into the purity of a substance, we can sort out the matter based on if it is pure or if it is a mixture of some type. Matter that is pure has a definite composition, meaning that the composition or the makeup of the substance is the same throughout the entire substance. Going another step further with pure matter, we have the most basic building blocks of all matter elements and compounds who are a combination of two or more elements. This piece of aluminum foil right here represents the perfect example of a pure substance that comprises of only an element. Every little bit of this substance contains atoms of aluminum, and those atoms are number 13 on the periodic table. We will learn all about the periodic table in this series, but for now just understand that it's a table that contains every single known element in the world. There are 118 elements or atoms out there in the world, different kinds of atoms. So that means that every single thing that we see in this world is made up of either one or a combination of only 118 different building blocks. Other good examples that are pure substances that are elements are copper pipes, helium gas, gold, and even diamonds. A great example of a pure substance that contains a compound is salt. Table salt is a combination of sodium and A and chlorine, Cl, from our periodic table. Every tiny gram of salt you see right here contains molecules of this compound that has the two elements, sodium and chlorine, stuck together chemically. Though salt is a great example of a pure substance that contains a compound, the best example and the most prevalent example out there of a pure substance that contains a compound is dihydrogen monoxide, or in other words, water. Water is a chemical combination of two hydrogen atoms and one oxygen atom. So every drop of water that you see contains molecules of this compound. Those substances who don't get sorted into the pure class are put into the mixture class. Mixtures of matter contain physical combinations of two or more different substances. This class differs from compounds because in this case, the substances mixed together are only done so through physical means, not chemical. Within a mixture class, a substance will be further sorted into one of two different types of mixtures. Mixtures of matter that contain a definite physical composition are called homogeneous mixtures. This means that even though things are mixed together, Everything you see in that substance looks exactly the same. On the other side of the mixture of matter class are heterogeneous mixtures. 
which are mixtures that consist of an indefinite composition. This simply means that we will be able to see with our eyes the physical difference in the substance's appearance. A nice example of a homogeneous mixture is salt water. If I was to mix my salt compound with my water compound, the resulting solution has a definite physical composition throughout the entire substance. That means I have a homogeneous mixture. Another great example of a homogeneous mixture is the air that we breathe every second of the day. As some of you may already know, the air that we breathe in does not only contain oxygen, but rather is a mixture of other gases as well, including nitrogen, argon, carbon dioxide, oxygen, and a few others as well. An absolutely lovely and downright delicious example of a heterogeneous mixture is this apple pie right here. Looking at the apple pie, I can easily see the differences between the ingredients that are mixed together in it. Well, at least before I eat it, you can. Mm-hmm. Oh. Going back to our three main sorting classes, substances are sorted based on how pure they are, but they are also sorted based on the state of matter that they exist in. All the matter that you see in the world exists in the state of either a solid, liquid, or a gas. Let's now take a look at how matter is sorted based on the state that it exists in. Now there are probably a million examples of solid matter that is right there in front of your face at this very moment. But if we were to look at this solid coffee mug right here, we can see that it has a definite shape and volume, meaning the shape and volume of this coffee mug does not change. If we take a closer look at what the molecules in the coffee mug are doing, we can see that the molecules are closely packed together and that they are moving or vibrating really slowly, which means that they contain a little bit of low energy. If we take a close look at what the molecules of water are doing, we will see that they are close together as well, but not as close as the molecules in a solid, and they are also moving, and they're moving a little bit faster than what the molecules in the solid were. If we take a close look at what the molecules of a gas are doing, we will see that they are spread out throughout the container that they are filled in. They are moving in straight lines and they are moving randomly and fast. Our final major classification of matter is based on the way the matter will undergo change. All matter that maintains its identity but changes its form is undergoing a physical change. When a substance is changed completely and a brand new substance is created, the matter is undergoing a chemical change. If you sit there long enough with an ice cube in your hand, your body heat will induce a physical change. Anytime a substance undergoes a phase change, like the solid ice, melting into liquid water, you have a physical change. Another example of a physical change is if I was to tear a piece of paper. Though I am changing the form of this substance, the identity remains. Chemical change takes place when a brand new substance is formed from the change. An example of a chemical change, and one that should not be attempted at home, y'all, without parent supervision, is burning of a piece of paper. The ashes that are created from this change are new from the original substance that we started with. Therefore, we have created a chemical change. Chemical changes are the same thing as saying a chemical reaction. So throughout this series and throughout this class and chemistry course, 
we will be using the terms interchangeably. Some things we can look for to indicate that we have seen a chemical change are a change in color or odor, the formation of bubbles or a solid, or the change in heat, just as we saw with our burning piece of paper. Okay, everyone. Now that the matter sorting hat has helped us understand how to classify and sort all the different matter that's out there in the world, at the prompt, pause the video and show these examples you mean business. Well, that does it for today, folks. I hope you had fun and I hope you learned something new. I'm your guide, your host, Mr. Brown. But remember, you matter because you're matter. So what's the matter? Thanks for watching. Have a glorious day.